You know, reanimator is one of the most fun strategies you can play in Commander. Not only do you have your deck, life, and hand as resources, but you get access to your graveyard, and in many cases, the graveyards of your opponents as well. There have been many powerful reanimator-focused legendary creatures in the history of Magic, but we're going to use a less obvious candidate for this deck. Nashi, Moon Sage Scion. Wait, wait, what? Nashi? He has nothing to do with graveyards, I hear you say. Well, you're right. That's the point. If we played something like Carador or Marin, everyone would know what we were up to. Next thing you know, it's Bajookabog this and rest in peace that, Leyline of the Void all up in your face, and all of our fun is as dead as the creatures we once hoped to reanimate. No, what we need here is stealth. The start of stealth only ninjas and rats are capable of. That's right, this is a rat ninja reanimator deck. But you didn't see that coming, or did you? And here's another thing you didn't see coming. The ad! This video is brought to you by Keeps, and what better place for a subscription men's health brand for hair loss prevention than in a reanimator deck tech? Don't let your hairline get to the point where you need to reanimate it, eh? Eh? See? Tied it all together. There's nothing wrong with balding or going bald, of course, but if you don't want to lose your hair and your body has other plans, well, that's where Keeps comes in. Keeps is the generic version of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products. It's actual medication, and you work with a licensed doctor via online consultation so that you can get the generic version of that medication. So that's Keeps. It's just medication at a huge savings. It's available for you should you want it, and best of all, it's delivered right to your door, all of which makes for a safe, secure, and easy process. And remember, there is nothing wrong with being bald or going bald, but there's nothing wrong with wanting to keep your hair, to present yourself as you wish to present yourself, and for many of us, Keeps is just a tool that lets us do that. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com forward slash Tolarian, or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tolarian. Don't let yourself end up saying rat. I need to reanimate my hairline like this rat reanimator deck. I don't really know what that means, but you know what? With Keeps, you can actually save a few bucks in doing that along the way. So thank you, Keeps, for sponsoring this video. Nashi Moon Sage's Scion is a 3 2 legendary rat ninja for one generic and two black mana that reads Whenever Nashi Moon Sage's Scion deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of each player's library. Until end of turn, you may play one of those cards. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. In addition to this, Nashi also has Ninjutsu for three and a black. But since he's in the command zone, that doesn't really matter. This deck isn't exactly built around Nashi, but that ability of his is extremely fun and may prove useful. Furthermore, he is both a rat and a ninja, which are the two creature types this deck features most prominently. To help guarantee he makes contact whenever possible, we of course run Rogue's Passage and Shizo, Death's Storehouse, which can make him unblockable or give him fear, respectively. The fear ability makes him blockable only by other black creatures and artifact creatures, so be ready to cast some of your opponent's best spells against them. Rats are intelligent and tricky creatures, if small. As such, our rats are largely evasive and cost very little mana. Nizumi Cutthroat and Razortooth Rats both have the fear ability. Rancid rats have skulk, meaning they can't be blocked by creatures with greater power than them. While stronghold rats have shadow, which means it can only be blocked by other creatures with shadow, a rare commodity in Commander. The elusive zodiac rat comes from Portal 3 Kingdoms and has swamp walk, meaning if an opponent controls a swamp, they can't block it. And yes, Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth is in this deck, so everyone will have swamps. Evasion is extremely useful on our rats as it makes 
makes it easier to ninjutsu out our ninjas. Throat Slitter is another rat as well as a ninja, and it allows us to destroy a target non-black creature whenever it deals combat damage. For the added price of discarding a card, Dokuchi Silencer does much the same. It isn't just creatures our ninjas can deal with. Skull Snatcher lets us exile dangerous cards in our opponent's graveyards when it deals damage, and Dokiba Gang Shinobi forces our opponents to discard cards from their hand. That ability is useful for two reasons. One, it disrupts our opponent's resources, and two, it fills their graveyard for our deck's main strategy, reanimation. Ink Eyes, Servant of Oni, is another legendary rat ninja that allows us to put a creature from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under our control whenever she deals combat damage to a player. Her ninjutsu cost is three and two black, and on top of that, she can be regenerated for one and a black. Nizumi Grave Robber is a rat rogue that can exile a card from target player's graveyard for one and a black. And if there are no cards in the graveyard, transforms into Night Eyes, the Desecrator, which can bring a creature from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control for four and a black. While neither a rat nor a ninja, Geth, Lord of the Vault, is a powerful source of reanimation. He has Intimidate, making him difficult to block in a fight, and has an ability for X generic and a black mana that reads, put target artifact or creature card with mana value X from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, tapped. That player mills X cards, so not only can Geth get us creatures, but he can get us artifacts as well, and fills our opponent's graveyards, giving us more resources. Speaking of cards that both fuel our strategy and help pay it off, we run a copy of The Eldest Reborn, a saga for four and a black that forces our opponents to each sacrifice a creature when it enters the battlefield. Discard cards on the next turn, then put a creature from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control on the turn after that. We'll also toss in some classic reanimator spells like Animate Dead, Reanimate, Stitch Together, and Victimize. There's a reason that all of these cards are considered classics of the genre, and I see no reason why we shouldn't keep them in our arsenal. We run some classic black card draw, including a trio of well-loved enchantments, two sorceries, and village rites. Because we are a graveyard-focused deck, we also run a lot of mill, both for ourselves and our opponents. Ghoul Caller's Bell costs one mana and can be tapped to make each player mill a card. Mesmeric Orb costs two mana and forces each player to mill a card each time they untap a permanent. It adds up pretty quickly. Sands of Delirium costs X to tap and mill that many cards from the top of a target player's library. When it comes to self-mill, we have Perpetual Timepiece, and a pair of dredge creatures, Golgari Thug and Stinkweed Imp. If either are in our graveyard, we can put cards from the top of our library into our graveyard and return them to our hand instead of drawing cards. They pair well with Tortured Existence, an enchantment that lets us pay a single black mana to discard a creature card from our hand in exchange for another creature card from the graveyard. Pay a black, discard one of our dredge creatures, get something useful back into our hand, and keep the graveyard growing. Vile Entumor and Buried Alive help us put the exact creatures we need in our graveyard, which will be very useful for when it comes to one of our main win conditions. Rise of the Dark Realms. Rise of the Dark Realms is a sorcery for seven generic and two black that puts all creatures in all graveyards onto the battlefield under our control. As backup, we run Exsanguinate and Torment of Hailfire. Yes, we run Torment of Hailfire. And you do too. Everyone does. Sorry, sorry, got a little distracted. These are two X spells with a devastating impact on our opponent's life totals. To make sure those X values are as high as possible, we'll run Cabal Coffers and Cabal Stronghold. We are in mono black after all, and the vast majority of our lands are swamps. And as mentioned earlier, we're running Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth. Crypt of Agadim makes a black mana for each creature in our graveyard, which is likely a fair bit in a deck like this one. So let's throw it in too. Since we're in mono black, our removal options are relatively limited. Feed the Swarm helps us deal with troublesome enchantments, while Defile, Go for the Throat, and Infernal Grasp are efficient means of targeted creature removal. Introduction to Annihilation costs five generic mana, a hefty price for a single target removal spell, and at sorcery speed no less, but it can hit any non-land permanent, an invaluable ability in mono black. 
Finale of Eternity allows us to take down three creatures, and with enough mana, revive all the creatures in our graveyard. Larry Niven's Disc gives us mass removal for when we come across a pesky artifact and enchantment-heavy decks. Of special note, we also run Mutilate, which reads, all creatures get negative one, negative one until end of turn for each swamp you control. Perfect for us as we run 30 swamps. And of course, to round out our removal suite, we run Toxic Deluge, as does everyone else in black. Since we're dealing in reanimation, let's put Burnished Heart and Solemn Simulacrum on the list beside all those one and two cost mana rocks. Death, Rebirth, and Death Again are pure value with those two artifact creatures. And since we'll be milling a large part of our own deck, Crucible of Worlds will make sure we never miss our land drops. So are you ready to harness the hidden power of those who hide in the shadows and deal in death? If you are, consider Nashi Moon Sage's Scion and his Rat Ninja Reanimator deck. What legendary creature would you like to see a tech for next? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Remember, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com forward slash Tolarian or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tolarian. It's the generic version of the only FDA approved hair loss medications and it's delivered right to your door at a huge savings. And with my code, the savings is even more. Thanks again, Keeps, for sponsoring this video.